I have on a skirt, which is, I made from my husband's old t-shirts, which is an Alabama chain and simple skirt pattern. An old uh, thrifted uh, flax that has been eco-dyed, then over-dyed with indigo. And an Alabama chain and little jacket thing that I bought. And I mean, I bought the cloth and I didn't like the color and I dyed the whole thing indigo. And I have on hand knitted socks. Oh, I have to have a look at them too. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny because you know when you make a pair of socks, you always have yarn left over. So then you have all these little bits of yarn left over. And I thought, well, I'm going to take each of those bits. And so this pair of socks is three or four different bits of socks mm. knitted together. So what's your motivation for getting so involved with your wardrobe? Well, it's a way of having control what you wear. It's a way of a affording what you can you know, like I can't necessarily buy some of the things and at Alabama chain and or other places so I if you make them it's a way of of I don't know being able to have what you might want also it's a way of keeping things out of the landfill I'm a thrifter I've been thrifting my clothes since I don't know when my mother started me doing that so you know, it's a way of finding things that also that you might not be able to afford or and or good quality um, materials, lovely wools or nice linens that you might not be able to find at Target, let's say. Mm -hmm. And um, what about sort of fit and a sense of ownership and things like that? Well, there is that too, right? You're making them for your uh, for your body. So they do fit better, although I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm uh, the best stitcher sewer. So I usually just use the pattern. Although my friend Susie did help me figure out how to, to cut, alter it so that it fit my body better. And when you put them on, they feel, it feels kind of nice to wear what, what you sewed and that fits your, your frame, your body. So where did you learn those skills? Well, I... Unfortunately, I didn't pay so much attention to my mother and grandmother when they were sewing and what they tried to teach me. So I took a workshop um, with Alabama Chanin and when I, to make a skirt, and that's how I started. I wouldn't say I'd hand-sewn anything before that. It was just determination, really, <laughs> and trial and error, you know. And are many people in your circle doing this, or do you feel you're a little bit um, on your own? Well, I would say a lot of my friends make their own clothes or mend or stitch. Yes, that's um, over time. Maybe that's just how you, you know, I was going to say accumulate, but that's not really it. How you become aware of people, you gravitate to people that are like you or that are doing things like you you know my friend Amy dies Katrina makes her clothes yes I my immediate circle yes in your community are there many other people getting hands-on I don't know I don't know when I if I had to look for their just to look at what people are wearing I would say not that many if I go to the post office I, you know I don't I don't see that many handmade clothes maybe I'm just not going at the right time and um, can you be specific about the the emotional and social well-being benefits that you might get from being hands-on with your clothes? Well, I, I think when you make something, when you when you repair a sweater that has a hole in it, maybe just has one hole in it, but you're not you're making something anew. You're, I like to do it in bright colors. I mend my husband's jeans, and he happily wears them and is proud of all the patches. I think it. It gives a lift. You're doing something for yourself, but you're also doing something that's not, maybe for others, maybe for the, the environment. You're trying to save the landfill. And what about the actual process of the stitching and the soothing nature of that? I think it, it slows you down, puts you in a place, and that rhythmic... If the thread doesn't get tangled, which often happens, but it, the quietness of sewing, I, I quite like, sort of takes you out of your daily world um, and lets me just concentrate on making and 
using your hands. So is it helpful for mental health? I think so. Uh, I think making is helpful for mental health. You know, making a garden or cooking a meal. I think that all that slowing down and at the end you have something that you've done, put your hands on. Part of your work is actually also making people aware. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I started thinking about, so I, I'm an artist. I, I make a lot of work and I started thinking in the past couple of years, um, after doing a series of nature tours and you would tell somebody the name of something and they would know what that was. And there was some power, maybe that's the same sort of thing as like making, but the power of knowing what that plant was. And so I started to think like, well, maybe I don't need to make so many objects anymore. Maybe I can work on a larger series, which I called Making Aware. And so what does that, how do I enact that? Well, I do lead nature tours. I have been teaching some dye workshops. So to teach people how to use natural dye to make natural colors um, for their artwork or their clothes. And so it's just a way of not putting so much, so many things into the world. But um, I like to make people aware in the springtime of dandelions. People hate dandelions, but you know they're the first food for the pollinators. And bees, are, bumblebees are pollinators, but there's so many other insects that are pollinators, and we really need our insects, and they they are in decline. And so. That sort of subtle way of making somebody aware of something. It's kind of a political action, maybe. So it seems that a lot of this is about connection to connection to earth and connection to plants, connection to self. Yes. Do you want to expand on that? Sure. We um, moved from living in a city to a rural location where we live now. And um, one day we were standing ripping up some invasive vines and weeds, if you will, and I started, I looked around and I thought to myself, you know, the people that walked on this land prior to us would know how to use all of these items. And there must be things you can do with them. And of course there are, you know, you can um, eat a lot of weeds, you can um, dye with plant materials, D-Y-E. Um, and you can heal with them. And so I started on the path of learning how to natural dye or took a workshop on herbal, an herbal, year-long herbal workshop to know what to do with the plants. Um, it feels like a connection to the place, that sort of knowing like, oh yes, there you are, plantain. You're really great to um, help when you have a splinter or you, you know, the dandelion, you can eat every part of it. I think there it does help you root to a place, you know, to see how the changes happen every day and what the natural world is doing out there.